staying in Germany, a German woman who joined the Islamic State group has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for letting a Yazidi girl die of thirst. A German court found the woman guilty of two crimes against humanity in the form of enslavement. She and her former husband had kept the five-year-old Yazidi girl as a slave, chained up, and let her die in extremely hot conditions. All right, we're going to talk uh, to our political correspondent, Thomas Sparrow, uh, who has been tracking uh, the case for us. Uh, this is a very disturbing case, uh, Thomas, but uh, tell us a little bit more about the circumstances of this little girl's death and the sentencing of the woman who we can only refer to as Jennifer W uh, for privacy reasons. It is very disturbing indeed, but it's also very significant. It's been described as one of the first convictions anywhere in the world related to the Islamic State group's persecution of the Yazidi community. So certainly from that perspective, very important. We're talking concretely here about Jennifer W., who was born in the German state of Lower Saxony, who converted to Islam in 2013, then moved to Iraq and 2016, was then deported back to Germany. And now this court in Munich has convicted her not only of belonging to the Islamic State group, but also of aiding and abetting attempted murder, attempted war, war crimes and crimes against humanity, in particular for failing to intervene in the death of this small child. So certainly very disturbing, but also very important. It's certainly a circumstance that is being followed closely by those who are interested in the way the Islamic State group dealt with the Yazidi community. Thanks for that, Thomas. Now, more than 1,000 people have travelled from Germany to Syria and Iraq uh, to join uh, Islamist groups since 2012. More than a quarter of them are women. Many who left are now back in Germany. And to, to talk about such IS returnees, and Speckhardt is with me now. She is the director uh, of the International Centre for the Study of Violent Extremism, and she joins me uh, from the Maldives. Um, welcome to DW. Perhaps let's begin with, um, you know, the note that my colleague Thomas ended on. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you know regarding how the so-called Islamic State views the Yazidi people? We know that IS killed thousands of Yazidi people, including this little girl who became a slave. In fact, the UN calls it genocide. Sure. Uh, hello, Christine. Um uh, IS uh, saw the Yazidis as devil worshippers, and um, they took their women and children as uh, uh, slaves and enslaved them. But I think the most important thing for your case is how Jennifer W. got caught. She was a returnee that uh, uh, your country believed was innocent in the beginning, but um, it's a perfect example of people that are returned back to um, Europe and if they stay with IS and uh, brag about it, they will be caught. And she was caught by an FBI informant who she told the story to. Mm. And you have a real, excuse me, yes? You have a real hero, your um, federal prosecutor who brought her to justice. And back, of course, you're talking about this case and how she was caught in. I, I just wondered, you, you've spoken to, to hundreds um, of IS um, returnees like Jennifer W. Um, what concerns you uh, about them and the, and the prosecutions that they face? Well, um, the real concern is that people like her would come back um, home and claim that they're innocent, which is what she did do. But um, she was stupid enough to continue in it and to uh, brag to an informant uh, what she had done and the murder of this little girl and uh, at her husband's hand, those hands, although she didn't stop it, and uh, basically incriminate herself. And for me, this is a good example of how our security forces work together and that people that are in IS, that are guilty, that went to Syria and came back, will get caught and they will get prosecuted. And your federal prosecutor, Claudia Gorf, um, dogged this case and she found the mother of the child that was murdered. She brought everybody to court. She found a creative way to um, try the case. And this woman is going to pay the price for what she did. But that said, there's plenty of people that are somewhat innocent. I mean, they went to IS believing that it was mm. a state. Uh, they 
they um, didn't commit crimes, they didn't murder anyone. I'm talking about women in particular and certainly children. And we should be less fearful of bringing them home knowing that our, our governments work together. Our government and your government caught Jennifer W. And our, your prosecutors in particular are fantastic. Claudia should be lauded as a hero for trying this case so well. And I have one more question for you, very briefly, if you can. What can you say about how important uh, this trial is uh, of a returned female IS member in the global context? It's important because it shows that we can bring these people to court. Um, we can successfully try the ones that did commit crimes. Um, we can track down the evidence. Um, it's, it takes hard work. Claudia worked really hard on this case. She turned over stones that are very hard to turn over to find the evidence. And she brought it to court. And this woman is going to pay the price for her crimes. That said, there's other women that are relatively innocent that need to be brought home, and there's certainly children that need to be brought home, and pity mm. given to them that they were fooled by Islamic State propaganda. But bravo for this case. It shows the world Thank that you. we can bring these people to justice. Thank you very much. Anne Speckert of the International Center for the Study of Violent Extremism.